And then all of a sudden, I, I thought it sounded kind of loud, uh, louder, but I looked up, and all of a sudden, it smashed right dead into the center of the World Trade Center. Uh, big, uh, big flash of flame, uh, fire coming out from all over, then the, all the, uh, the Here's the plate, here's the tape. You see the plane coming in from what looks like the east side, and it blows into the building with the flames and the smoke billowing out the other side of the tower. This is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents, and you can see the two towers. A huge explosion now raining debris on all of us. We better get out of the way. In the middle of reading to a class, President Bush was alerted of an attack on the World Trade Center in New York. I want you all to know that America today, America today is on bended knee. 2001, Congress passed the Aviation and Transportation Security Act. The act required that airport screening be conducted by federal officials and that 100% of check bags be screened. Our war on terror begins with Al-Qaeda, but it does not end there. It will not end until every terrorist group of global reach has been found, stopped, and defeated. The Taliban fell within months. The U.S., along with its allies, turned to nation building with big promises of lessons learned. The detainees are not choir boys. They are believed to be determined killers. These people are terrorists. They're terrorists. That's the only thing I can say, they're terrorists. In fact, many were likely innocent of any crime, swept off the Afghan battlefield and handed over to U.S. forces in exchange for bounties. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger to show that we will stand up for what we know to be right, to show that we will confront the tyrannies and dictatorships and terrorists who put our way of life at risk. I am quite sure, I think most people are, that he has these weapons. Just as I had to accept that the evidence now is that there were not stockpiles of actual weapons ready to be deployed, most palpable sense of fear among those caught up in the moment. Below ground, in the pale emergency light, hundreds made their way through the tube carriages. A sense of claustrophobia all too apparent. We looked at those very shaky pictures taken on someone's cell phone uh, as you escorted Saddam Hussein into uh, the execution chamber. The last British forces are leaving Iraq after eight years. Marines from the Royal Navy are finally heading home. Tense new beginnings for Tunisia, its Arab neighbours nervous of how revolutionary feelings could spread. Mubarak deposed. Egypt's 18-day revolution defies all expectation. The Libyan revolution of 2011 was about one thing above all else, removing Colonel Gaddafi from power. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of al-Qaeda. Syrian security forces have opened fire on protesters with reports of between 20 and 100 people dead on a day of unprecedented protest against President Bashar al-Assad. The violence followed a week of unrest and calls by opposition activists for countrywide protests after Friday prayers today. Please. 
Yesterday was no ordinary Saturday for the soldiers in Iraq. It was the last Saturday in Iraq. For these, the last U.S. troops left here. They seemed to come out of nowhere. The terror group ISIS started capturing key territory in Iraq. For three days, France has been gripped by an unfolding drama of unprecedented violence. The terror that was unleashed as that first burst of gunfire ripped through the Charlie Hebdo office on a quiet Wednesday morning in Paris and sent shockwaves through Europe. It is Latin night at The Pulse, a gay nightclub in downtown Orlando, packed with 320 people. And this video of people dancing taken just last night, and then at 2.02 a.m., bartenders announcing last call, when suddenly, the gunfire. This was the day the terror threat arrived at Westminster. We're inside the grounds. Medics are desperately trying to help another officer who's been stabbed. This attack stands out for its appalling, sickening cowardice. Darren Osborne has just carried out a terrorist attack. He's being restrained by the people he had tried to kill. Muslim worshippers who had just finished praying late at night. After nine months of fighting, Mosul has come back to Iraq. For the first time in three years, these forces have entered the city. This is where Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi declared his caliphate, which provokes frightening questions about the future. Injured people are rushed to hospital. They were gunned down during Friday prayers at al Nur Mosque in the center of Christchurch. And we just signed an agreement that puts us in a position to get it done, bring us down to in the vicinity of 8,000 troops. I'll be meeting personally with Taliban leaders in the not too distant future. They will be killing some very bad people. They will keep that fight going. We've had tremendous success in Afghanistan in the killing of terrorists, but it's time after all these years to bring our people back home. Taliban forces entered the heart of the Afghan capital, Kabul, today, the culmination of a rapid advance and retaking of control almost exactly two decades after they were ousted from power. Fighters were filmed inside the presidential palace after Ashraf Ghani, now the former president, fled the country. Afghans and foreign nationals have been trying to get on planes at Kabul airport, where international troops have been involved in evacuations. But security there is reported to be fragile. The latest developments came after the Taliban moved through one Afghan province after another in recent days and headed towards the capital.